Um, good afternoon. Um, my name is Hal, and uh, today we're going to talk about our work on improving uh, the Spark R projects and one of its applications we adopt in a real-world application. And this work was supported by uh, Huawei America Lab. A little bit more about ourselves. Uh, I'm currently a graduate student at Purdue, and I have a couple of industry experience working as interns in companies like Huawei and Google. And I'm also an active contributor of Spark R project. And my co-speaker, Haitron, he's a candidate, PhD candidate from UIUC. Um, previ previously, he is a research staff member at IBM Research. Um, so, uh, hopefully, some of you have heard of this Spark R project. It's our front end for Spark. So, we already have Spark, so we can do scalable, flexible uh, data analytics with pretty good performance. And on the other hand, we have R, which I would say is the top one uh, statistical software tool uh, in data scientist community. So the Spark R projects combine both the merits and um, allowing the data scientists to uh, do statistics and data mining uh, more easily and at larger scales. So uh, what I'm going to talk about today is our work to trying to make Spark R a better project to get better performance and more functionality to be better adopted by the data scientist community. Uh, the first two is more on the engineering side, and the last we will introduce a Spark R ap application we're using. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is how we correctly capture a function closure. So as you might know, how Spark R works is the R process on the uh, master node will distribute its user's function to different worker nodes so that the function will be evaluated in parallel. However, uh, R allows user to define free variables outside function scope. So as you can see in this example, we have function two, except for variable x, which is a function argument, both variable y and z are actually free variables defined outside scope of function two. And R has this scoping rule uh, to search for their values in enclosing environments. So in the old version of Spark R, uh, you, it, it used a utility function called get dependencies to capture function closure. And it might lead to two drawbacks. The first, um, uh, it might include unrelated variables and make our closure unnecessarily large. Uh, the second one is even worse. It might include wrong values. Because think about this. If the user have updated the value of the variables before the function closure is captured, then the original or the corrected value of the variable is lost. And that breaks the programming semantics. So our approach in the three pull request, we create a new utility function called clean closure. Uh, what it does is basically traversal um, the AST, which is syntax tree of the uh, function body, and examine each node to decide whether the, var uh, the variable should be included or not. So we solve both the problems. We include only useful variables with the correct values. Uh, how effective that would be? Um, if we take logic regression k-means, for example, we can see if we're using a new approach, we can dramatically reduce the closure size um, compared to the old approach. So you might say that a couple of hundreds of kilobytes is not a big deal. But if you think about this, most of our applications are iterative algorithms. So as the program goes on and on each iterations, the closure size might get larger and larger. Uh, in addition to, to these two examples, we have another example in unit test. Uh, and from iterations from one to six, we can see that if we're using the old approach, the closure size go up in some exponential way. So by using the new approach, we can make it go up uh, linearly. That is reasonable. The second thing I, I want to talk about is uh, uh, let's focus on the worker side. So currently, Spark R, uh, stores our data in the serialized format inside Spark X Scooter. And Spark Executor will communicate with multiple R processes through the pipes or sockets. And in this way, we might suffer from the serialization overheads. And there will also be data transmissions back and forth. And we might also have extra data copies in different processes. Sometimes, if we have really large input data sets we, and, and we want them to cache into the uh, uh, Spark memory, we might have this kind of error cannot allocate memory for R. Oh, that's bad. So uh, 
in our environment, we're trying to replacing the GNU R process with uh, Rangin. Rangin is actually a Java-based R interpreter. Um, it is still not fully compatible with GNU R, but uh, it's one of the most compatible uh, implementation open source. So we stored the R data in Rangin format, which is S expression, uh, by creating multiple threads inside Spark Executor, and we get rid of the serialization issues. Uh, there are going to be no data transmissions, and there's no data copies. And even more, if we pack the whole things into a Rangin package, and that will benefit more for enterprise users, because all the R applications will be packed into Java and Scala code. And that brings big data prototypes closer to the products. This here is some little benchmarking. Uh, for LR, if we use Rangin workers, we can finish job in shorter times in each iteration compared to using the GNU R workers. And in memory use, if we use GNU R workers, we, w the memory will be consumed both in Spark executor and multiple GNU R processes. Uh, but if by using Rangin workers, we only have the memory consumed by the Spark executor. Um, so now next I will hand over to my co-speaker, Haichuan, talk about vectorizations. In Spark R, the Lplay. As you can see, Lplay is one of the core functions in Spark R. In fact, it implements the map semantic of Spark R. And in real execution, uh, Lplay take in one RDD object as input, and it will be scheduled to different workers. And in each different worker, it will call the standalone R's Lplay do the real map function. So it will call the uh, standalone R, L apply to apply a, a function to the individual partition of the input RDD. And here comes a problem. The performance of L apply in standalone R is quite slow. The reason is R is an interpreted language. It has no JIT no native code generation in the current standalone R, the official implementation of R, GNU R. So let's look at how the L apply implemented in GNU R. I show the pseudocode of L apply. Basically, it uses a very simple for loop. In every iteration, it will pick one element of the input list and invoke the mapper function and store the result back to the output list. In order to improve the performance, GNU R has implemented this function with C routine. After compilation, this level of interpretation overhead has been removed. But there are still huge amount of overhead remained. Interpretation overhead remained. That is the F function, the mapper function call. Suppose we have one million of elements. Then we have to invoke F function one million times. That causes huge overhead. How to improve it? We have solutions. Because R is, an, an, is a vector language, it has a built-in vector support, and the vector performance in R is quite good. So in Spark R, it has L apply partition function to try to leverage the vector capability of R to improve the performance. But in order to use L apply partition, the user should first provide a vector version of a mapper function. I grab this function on the right-hand side from the um, um, logistic regression of the Spark R example. Instead of providing the right, left-hand side simple form, the user should provide the complex vector form of a, uh, the uh, graduate function. Besides that, um, user also need to transform the data from original the simple list, function, uh, list data structure to a partitioned data structure. And in each partition, it should be a vector um, data structure. So this kind of transformation is complex. It's not so intuitive, and it's error prone. So how about let the compiler and the runtime to help us to do this? So our current proposal, and we have implemented this solution, is that we user, let user only provide a scalar mapper function, provide the apply function call, and the list data. And then let the compiler to do automatic vectorization, transform the scalar mapper function to the vector mapper function. And uh, let the compiler to rewrite the apply into apply partition call. And then a runtime to automatically transform the list data to a partitioned vector data. 
and we have implemented this solution as a package. And this package, we can run this package parallel with Spark R, and with this uh, package in you know, uh, uh, automatic transformation, we can get a, a, a obvious uh, speed up. For example, the still the logistic regression I shown before. If we have a larger data set in each sin single node, we can achieve up to 10x speed up compared to the original airplay implementation. And compared to the original manual transformed airplay partition call, which is shown in the L uh, Spark R's example code, we can achieve a s nearly the same performance, as, which means the show the speed up is nearly is close to one, the same performance of a manual transfer uh, code. Okay, so that's the sec uh, third optimization we used in Spark R. Okay. All right, so we have Spark R. Uh, Spark R is already good enough for batch processing. So how about real time analytics? Uh, that motivated us to create a Spark R streaming, uh, simply on top of Spark streaming. And we use that for real time log analysis. Uh, one application we use is that um, we want to smartly consolidate VMs based on analysis on their historical performance metrics. So, uh, and we pick R because R is a perfect tool for time series analysis and forecasting. So, and we collaborate with uh, Purdue IT department to, uh, uh, to get their uh, cloud workload traces. So the proof of concept framework looks like this. We monitor the VMs, uh, virtual machines, that stands for virtual, virtual machines on cloud. Um, and their performance metrics will feed, uh, fed, uh, be fed to the uh, Spark Car streaming, and we do some uh, stream analysis uh, based on our uh, scheduling algorithms. And finally, we will produce the final th or uh, the optimal consolidation results, so allowing the cloud infrastructure to reschedule the VMs, and all that goes into a loop. Uh, the analy analytics pipeline looks like this. So we have the source, which are the uh, uh, VM metrics, and then we're feeding to the Spark R streaming, do some map-like operations uh, for parsing and filtering. And then we can abstract the data as time series. We either aggregate it by time and aggregate by uh, different VMs. Um, so in the first branch, we com compute the correlations uh, among different workloads of uh, different VM workloads. And we can visualize that as a matrix, uh, a, a correlation matrix, something like that. And on the different branch, we can predict the future workloads of the uh, uh, VM workloads, and we combine both of the information correlations and the predicted workloads using our uh, scheduling algorithms and produce final consolidation results. So that's uh, how we use Spark R streaming in a real world application. And that will conclude our talk, and thanks for coming. <laughs>